blender. Okay. All right, in this blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the fracture modifier to do various things in blender. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the fracture modifier, let me show you some examples where I use the fracture modifier version of blender. Now, in this one, I'm basically just using the fracture modifier for crushing objects. And all the fracture modifier is doing is calculating the process of actually fracturing the objects. I have various different objects in this one. Some of them worked out better than others. Like this one worked out pretty good in my opinion. And you can do anything from, you know, bowling pins to glass. Here's a, another example. And there's different methods that it can use in terms of fracturing objects and in this uh, video right here I have several different fracture types but let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you just enough to get you going and then I'll show another or I'll uh, make another tutorial in a week or so uh, showing a little bit more something a little bit more um, uh, detailed or complex I guess I could say all right let's go ahead and get started first thing you need to do is go to this website it's called blenderphysics.com I will put the link of, to this website in the description of this video you need to download the fracture modifier whenever you go to blenderphysics.com just click on fracture modifier it'll bring you to this page scroll down and then just check uh, click on the uh, blender version that you need for your computer and don't forget to download this also which is the helper add-on because once you unpack this zip file for whichever version you download you're going to install the add-on like you normally would install any add-on into that version of uh, Blender. Once you um, once you unpack the fracture modifier version of Blender, you will see something like this, and it's a standalone program, which means it doesn't install. It just unpacks into a a folder like this, and then you just double click on it on blender.exe to open it up I already have it opened up alright first thing I'm, we're gonna do is go ahead and just get rid of this lamp because we're not gonna be doing any rendering so we'll just clean up the scene a little bit and we'll hide this camera alright let's go ahead and add a floor add mesh and then plane and we'll scale that up S for scale 10 enter and the reason why we're doing that is because we want uh, to have something for the cube to fall on and in this case it's going to be the plane obviously so with the plane selected click on the physics tab and then click rigid body and then change it from active to passive now right click on the cube and lift it up somewhere up about there and if you notice over here there's a new button it's called fracture let's click fracture all of a sudden you see all these settings don't get freaked out over the sheer abundance of these settings because there's a whole bunch of them I mean most of them you'll hardly ever use now there's several that you will use all the time which is the shard count uh, these splinter length settings constraint settings this and uh, constraint special breaking settings those you, you will use a whole lot and then a couple of them down here like fracture utilities you'll use these settings sometimes but let's go ahead and give this a try see what happens we're we're gonna leave all the settings at their default and then just click execute fracture 
And as soon as I clicked execute fracture, the box or the cube now has a green line around it. Now if we press play, you see the cube fall to the floor and then break apart. Now let's say we want to change this, make it break apart into 50 pieces. We have to change the, the number and then click execute fracture again. And then if we press play, it will break apart into 50 pieces. And let's just say 500 pieces. Now keep in mind, if you keep raising the amount, the number of pieces that it breaks into, your computer will run slower and slower. Now here's 500 pieces, execute fracture, press play. Simple enough, right? Now, let's suppose we want to do this a little bit different. We'll go ahead and uh, turn off the fracture settings for that. Turn off the rigid body settings. Now let's modify this cube. I'm going to press 1 to go on the front side view and then 5 to go on the orthographic view. Zoom in just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to change this from solid view to wireframe. And then over here in the modifiers, click on the modifier icon, add modifier, and then go to solidify. And then just drag the thickness until it's about there. And then click apply. So now, I mean, you have a hollow in the middle, then it's got walls on all six sides. So let's do that with the fracture modifier and see how it changes things. So with the cube selected, click on the physics tab, go to fracture. We'll keep everything set at the default settings. Click execute fracture and then press play. See here? It broke apart just like it's supposed to, but with the cube hollow on the inside. And let's now let's up the number of pieces. Let's say 500 pieces. Execute fracture. Now it could take a few seconds whenever you click execute fracture, depending on how fast your computer is. And then I'm going to press play. And kind of shattered more like it was brittle but there's nothing holding it, holding this uh, cube together it's literally just like let me I could bring it down to just above the floor so that whenever it falls and hits the floor it's hitting uh, you know relatively gently but yet it still breaks apart because there's nothing holding it together. Now what would we, would we use to hold that together? Well obviously we would use something called constraints. Down here in the fracture constraint settings we want to click on use constraints. Now if I click play you would think it would hold together and it does. Now let's raise it up just a little bit so it has hits the ground a little bit harder. Press play. Still holding together. Let's raise it up just a little bit higher. Still holding together, but you can see it's starting to crack, right? Now if I raise it up so it falls even f harder it should break this time I would imagine it's close enough but you see what I'm what I mean you these constraints is what hold the cube together now I'll lower this back down to something more reasonable now this right here in my opinion, let me back step just a little bit. Generally, I do not keep this on Centroid. In my opinion, it's not as stable on Centroid as it is when it's set to ver Vertex. 
Don't ask me what the difference is between Centroid and Vertex. I think it, ha it has to do with how the object, the little shards are constrained together, but I'm not 100% sure if I could explain it or if I fully understand um, the differences. I just know that the results uh, with it set on vol Vertex versus Centroid, it's more stable set on Vertex, or at least that has been my um, experience. Now, the search limit, I've never really messed with that, but I do know that whenever you set this to a higher standard or to a higher number, it connects each individual. Let me see if I can uh, go into wireframe so I can show you, see the individual shards. Like, you may have this shard right here. This right here is a setting of how far out this shard looks to another shard to be connected. I've never really messed with it. I've always kept it set at the, the default amount and for the most part it's never let me down. So feel free, free to play with it if you want. Alright. Let's You have other settings also, which, you know, mass, that's another big one. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 100. And the cube should fall completely apart. Well, it didn't fall completely apart, but it definitely made a difference. But if you look at it whenever it hits... It's kind of spongy. See how that? It's kind of spongy. It kind of compresses and then settles. And that's because we have another setting that's not set correctly. And where where to go? All right, it's the constraint uh here it is constraint special breaking settings and what this setting is is how far um, the pieces can move from each other before the constraint itself breaks now if you want it to be spongy to be able to absorb ob impacts you want to keep these set to either a high number or keep it set to zero but if you keep it set to zero, it's, it's, it's not really going to break. It's just going to wobble, I guess you could say. But if I put this on, let's say, one, so that if a part, if one of the shards uh, deviates by one degree, that constraint is considered broken. Now, if I press play now, breaks course some of it's fallen through the floor but that's because I don't have enough uh, st uh, steps per second in the rigid body world now if I turn this up to 240 it shouldn't should be a lot fewer shards fall through the floor it also makes it stronger too which is a side effect All right, let's go back to the fracture settings. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to 50 just so it calculates quicker. Click Execute Fracture. All right. Now, that's pretty much the basics of how to use the fracture modifier. In my next tutorial, because this one's completely off the cuff, I didn't plan it at all. In the next tutorial, it's going to be more polished. I'm going to show you how to, you know, fracture something like a piece of glass or something. But anyway, this right here should give you enough to just start fiddling with 
with uh, the fracture modifier version of Blender because I could tell you right now there's no better teacher than trying it yourself and figuring out what works that's pretty much what I have done and it's slower that's for sure it's it's always been a lot quicker a lot easier for somebody to tell you how to do something but in my opinion it's way more fun to figure out how to do it yourself and in my opinion if you spend the time to actually fiddle with it to figure out how to how these settings interact with each other you actually learn learn it so much better than if somebody else just taught you but anyway if you have any questions uh, drop a comment I will try to help you and again this was not a planned tutorial and it's not even really a tutorial it's just sort of you know like a helpful hint but I do plan on doing a more polished tutorial uh, sometime in the near future but anyway Thanks for watching. Later, people.